Hey, welcome back to Alien Rest of My. We got something special today. Uh, it didn't take that long either. It came from California. It's like a billion miles away. Anyways, just got this in. Oh my God, why they tape it up with blue tape? Nah, I already looked at this. I had to, man. This is a second unboxing. <laughs> I had to look at it. Anyways, this gives the car personality. Yep, gauges. Look at that. They're Marshall. They're from, what? Where are they from again? Anaheim? There it is. Anaheim, California. I got exactly what I wanted gauges. Two five inch and two, or uh, four, two and one sixteenth. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right, let me pull them out. Oh, <laughs> it's right there. Marshall, Anaheim, California. <laughs> Anyways, it comes with uh, six gauges. A bag of goodies. No stickers. Disappointed already. All right, got miles per hour, speedometer, tachometer, oil, bolts, water, and fuel. And then the bag of goodies, looks like they want you to use this oil pressure sensor, which I'm not going to. And I'll tell you why. I'm not gonna throw it out because I might have to for some reason, but I hopefully I won't have to. This also comes with a panic button. Need help? Just push the panic button. No, actually, this is the reset button for the speedometer. Also, it comes with, looks like a temperature sensor. A one-wire temperature sensor. I'm not going to use that either. And then a bunch of really cool purple connectors, which is cool. Alright, this is what the back looks like. We got, uh, like I said, uh, tachometer, speedometer. Uh, this is fuel, something, bolts, oil, temperature. Anyways, it all come with lights. It's already pre wired with 20 gauge wire. Hot and ground, hot and ground. And then it has a signal, ground, and um, ignition. Let's go over to the board. All right, here we go. Uh, what we have here, like I said, you got those two wires up top. One's a red, one's a black. Those are the dash lights. So you're gonna ground it to one, and the other one goes to your dash lights hookup. Then the one that says S, that's a signal. So that's coming from, like say, this is the fuel gauge. That's our uh, fuel level. That's the wire that comes in here. Hook it in there, you're good to go. This is a ground. And this is 12 volt keyed, so this is your power source. So when you turn it on, it gets power as well. Now all four of them are set up the same way, except for the voltage, which doesn't have a signal coming in. All you do is take the 12 volt keyed, put it in your fuse block, fuse box, in a, a fused, and that should work. And then you'll know, set up the, uh, the light the same way, the ground, and the red wire goes to your, um, what are they, courtesy lights or whatever. Yeah, I think it's courtesy lights. Like you're turning your lights on and you're driving down the road at night. And then the larger ones, which you have speedometer and tachometer. They're set up a little different. Tachometer doesn't have this. This is your uh, recalibration, recalibration uh, button for the speedometer. So up here, you got your lamp, which is those courtesy lights I was telling you about down here. You got your signal wire coming in, which 
we'll talk about later which one is coming off the ECM. You got 12 volt keyed. There's your panic button. Reset. And then you have 12 volt keyed. Uh, 12 volt keyed always on. When you have the ignition off, this needs to have power all the time. Hopefully it doesn't drain your battery. And then you have the ground. Uh, this is a speedometer. The tachometer is set up the same way, but it has an extra wire right here. It's signal two. I'm not going to use that. I just have one signal and no panic button. Hey, real quick, here's my plan. <laughs> Bear with me on this, all right? So these are the smaller gauges. Smaller gauge, smaller gauge, smaller gauge, smaller gauge. You got to have three signal wires because the voltage doesn't have a signal wire going out and coming from your uh, PCM or wherever direction. I want to make a connector so it'll be easy to hook them in and identify them. I'm going to do the same for the ground and the keyed. Then you go up to the, the larger disc or uh, gauges and the, the lights, there's going to be two wires to that so I might just mix those together. But it's, it's going to be a, a connector, signal wires coming in via connector, same with keyed, and then uh, on all the time, I'm going to have a connector as well, and the grounds. So the idea is, if I have to pull off the um, dash panel, I guess she is, with the, the gauges on, you pull it off and then just unconnect all those and then you pull it off and then you, those are just hanging there until you plug them back in. The whole idea is just plug and play. You get it? Anyhow, so let's get started. Okay, just a couple tips, just to let you know. Uh, this is way better than my drawings too. <laughs> On your tachometer, you'll see this little box up here. It's set to one up, two down, and what this does is set your tachometer to an eight cylinder. If you look here, you got one, two, three, one on, two and three are off. Exactly like that. So your tachometer, if you can see it, there, that one's up, these two are down. So it's set to eight cylinders. So if you start messing with messing with that, you're changing it. Make sure that's make sure that's set right. Also, your fuel gauge. This on there when you go out and buy this, it asks you you know how, how many ohms do you have, and based off of you know if you have a Ford, Chevy, or whatever. Um, uh, Fords or I think the ohms are higher or something like that, but based off tanks ink. I got a 90 ohm uh, Fuel sending unit so This is 90 ohms, so I know it's gonna work up just fine. That's something you need to think about Also before you hook up your fuel sending unit put power to it hook it up Make sure the tank is empty 100%. You know how I know why? I replaced the one on my Jeep and I still had two gallons in there. So when I put the new sending unit in there, it reads zero when it actually it has two gallons in the tank. So it's kind of beneficial, but you know, anyhow, make sure it's zero calibrated, meaning an empty tank before you put power to the sending unit. Just a tip. You got your uh, fence right here. But I, as I'm looking at this, I did forget something. Turn signals, flashers, check engine light. Mm. So maybe the flashers go up here and here and the turn signals, so, and then uh, check engine light down here or something like that. I'll have to get some LEDs where I'll have to drill in here and hopefully not screw it up. But I'll just probably do that. That'll be a later video. Here's what it looks like from the back. Uh, just a quick note. 
um, when you're putting these on, don't crank down on them because everything is plastic. And it'll just break, crack, and you'll cry. And then these wires right here are for your uh, lights. Um, don't pull on those because you could probably pull one out. These are a uh, 20 gauge. And the dash, if you're asking, it's a classic dash. I got it on Amazon. It was on sale and I had some birthday money. Anyways, moving on. All right, another update. Looks like I've done most of the wiring and yes, I have. Um, this was not hard at all. Uh, the only thing hard about it was I didn't have the right wires and I tried to get everything kind of color coordinated, color coordinated, but, and also gauge coordinated, but um, that just doesn't work out sometimes. So you gotta, you know, go with what you got. So we'll go over to the smaller gauges. You got the signal, the ground and the eye for ignition. Also, you have this uh, two wires up here. You got hot and ground, and that's your, uh, your dash lights. So when you come on, you turn them on, it's gonna light up the gauges. Each one of the smaller gauges has that, except for the voltage, which doesn't have a signal in because the volts are read through wherever it's connected to a 12 volt source. The two larger dials had lamp lights, they called them, and it's the same thing. So all these blue lights are blue uh, wires. They go, I'm gonna make it into a single, I'm going to make it into a single connector. And if you look at your uh, fuse box, right here it says dash light terminal. And it's going to connect right there, and there's your fuse. Now, on, on these smaller ones, you got your ground. And all these lights up here, you got your ground, which is these are actually black. I didn't have enough wire, black wire, in the right gauge, so I used white. So all the grounds. I'm going to put together and then I'm going to uh, get a bolt and uh, attach it all to the bolt and ground it to the dash. Then if you look over here, you got the eye, the ignition. So you have all these red wires. The ignition, that's your 12 volt key on. You got 12 volt key on right here and right here. I got them all pulled together and what that is as soon as you turn on the key, it's going to get power to all the gauges. And where we're going to put that is on one of these terminals. Now there's a, there's a terminal that stays on after the key is off. And that's perfect because these two gauges require 12 volts always on. So these are going to get wired up to the 12 volts that's always on, even when the ignition is off. And then you have your signal input. Uh, I have two wires hanging off the larger gauges. Decided to do that. I have not hooked them up to the car yet. You got your signal input here, here, and here. And that's that was pretty much it. It was just a lot of crimping, heat gun action, and it's not that bad. When it's all said and done, these are all going to be wrapped around and taped down. But it'll it'll look nice. So let's move on to connecting this to the wires underneath the dash so we can go ahead and test out these dials and also the lights when that gets all hooked up. All right, more to fall. All right, before we turn on the uh, the gauges to see where if the they're all working and the lights come on. I got my turn, uh, not turn signal, but uh, dash light indicator um, lights, LED lights come in, came in, and there's one, this is the, the uh, high beams, they're kind of small, but um, I think it'll work out. So here's where I plan the setup, uh, we got your turn, your left, right, and that is high beams, believe it or not, you got your park, parking brake and your check engine light. Yep, that's a 5.3 uh, engine. <laughs> Anyways, that's where I'm gonna set them up. So let's go ahead and drill uh, holes.
Uh, <laughs> these are half inch holes and I would not use a regular drill bit because it'll crack this plastic or chip it or gouge it like I did right there. I would use one of these. Just put some tape on there where you, you know, whatever, how big your hole is. And then just drill it down to the tape, pull it out, clean it off with a straight razor, and you're good to go. But these are all half inch. And there's half inch right about there. Anyways, use one of these. All right, I already put one of the indicators in. And all you do is take your wires, slide them through. Comes with a comes with a rubber gasket, O-ring. I don't know if we really need it, but I'm putting it on. So you put the nut on. Just slide the O-ring all the way until it's flush, right here. And then uh, put the nut on and finger tight. This is 15 millimeter, but uh, I just finger tighten it. And just line it up so it looks uh, correct or whatever way you want it to face. And you're good to go. Go ahead and finish the rest real quick. All right, here's here's all the connectors mounted. Uh, we've got park, left, high beams, right, check engine light, and parking again. Um, everything came out all right on the face of the uh, dash, except for this one spot because I used the wrong... Uh, drill bit, use one of these. Here's the back side. When you're putting these on, don't tug on these wires because they're 22 gauge and they're real frail. Fragile. Anyways, um, and then just tight, uh, finger tight these down. You're good to go. What I'm going to do with the, the wires, I'm going to put a connector on the end and uh, have a corresponding connector to the uh, the wires underneath the dash and that way I can disconnect it and remove the dash with with everything so that's what I got to do next all right I got the connectors in for the indicator lights that are on the dash I mean exactly what I needed more than I needed but it's just a two prong connector and it's I think it's pretty pretty sure it's 18 gauge but um, it's exactly what I wanted but before we move on, if you haven't done so, go ahead and hit that alien like button just to keep the algorithm going on the channel. All right? All right, uh, I'm pretty much done with all the connectors. You see, I just heat shrinked it. Uh, I did it a little tight so it helped holding everything together. I just wrapped it. I didn't solder it. Uh, like I said, there's it's fairly delicate. So just be careful when you're messing with these wires because you don't pull them out. Um, and it's just a two prong connector. So I got to go on the uh, dash and go ahead and connect all the other ones to their corresponding switch okay I'm uh, pretty sure I'm done with the indicator lights or yeah indicator lights get over here you get your check engine light it's hooked up there I think that's oh no and then uh, we got your right turn signal and over here you got left turn signal, brake light, and high beams. So let me go ahead and plug all these in. I just mounted or laid up the uh, dash panel up there just to see. All I'm doing it right now is just to show you the indicator lights. And uh, everything's a work in progress. Just remember that. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and turn on the power. And the check engine light's on. So that is actually working. There's probably all sorts of things wrong with it. Look at the parking brake. 
That thing is sticking. There it is. That works. I just have to put a little grease on that uh, control back there. Uh, we'll go ahead and do high beams. I have the lights on. There you go. High beams. All right. Lights are on, and let's. Right now, the blinkers are not working out. Turn off the lights. And when I turn on the left blinker, I got flashers. And same thing on the right blinker. There's the flashers. They actually work. All right, uh, I'm not going to call this a failure. <laughs> not going to call it a failure. What I'm going to call it is done for now. This is going to be part one. I got some issues to take care of. And I did read something once. Um, I'll look into it again. If you put in LED, turn signal lights or whatever, your flasher has to reflect. Turn signal flasher needs to... Uh, be one that is compatible with LED lights. So that might be my problem. Check engine lights, always gonna be on because there's always something wrong with this. But um, I just gotta uh, work work on the parking brake. Just, it just sticks. So I gotta just put a little grease on there. Uh, but the high beams work. Uh, like I said, I'm just gonna end this as part one right now. Um, I wanted to show you all the gauges. But to do that, I have to do, I have to turn on the engine and I got to prep the engine for that and drain the tank. Then I'll hook up the fuel, fuel gauge, because if you hook up the fuel gauge, it's going to read whatever you have in there is zero. So if it's five gallons, it's going to read zero. So empty out the fuel tank, hook it up, fill it up, and then you can check it. But, um... Until then, that's all I have for right now, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.